Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we just had a rash of news just come bang, 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 bang. It's uh, Tuesday, the, I don't know what day it is, 27th. I don't pay attention to dates and times. I'm too focused on hockey. I don't even know what day it is. Uh, we just had a rash of news just go bang, 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 bang. It's 11 o'clock mountain time. And I'm going to go just fly with it, talk about it. I'm not preparing the video or anything like that. Blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> Do you know how many time videos people actually take to get it all perfect and everything like that? Too much time for me. Yep. I need naps, man. Okay, at the end of this video, we're going to do a little Perlo dance. And I'm going to tell you about some interesting stuff that this channel is striving towards. our goal for the future. So go check it out. All part of Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do you like all sports? The four major sports in North America and teams that are on those four major sports? Then you'll like the website, Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers.com. We are growing and looking for content creators as well. So if you want to be one, put your comment down in the comment section and we'll see what we can do. Maybe you're the next uh, football commentator or baseball blogger or whatever for Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Making a little money. Make a little money. All right, NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. It will be on tonight at uh, from 7.30 to 9.30, Tuesday the 27th from 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern. Come check us out. Interactive, fun, you'll enjoy it. Okay, we got to get out. There's so much news. This video is going to be forever if I don't get on it right away. Okay. Well, first of all, let me hit the window capture. There we go. Okay. Alex Ovechkin signs with the Washington Capitals for how much, you say? Ten, or sorry, $9.5 million for five years. $47.5 million. Actually, probably taking, he said he was going to, uh, go for less. He was going to sign for less. You can make a case that that's less. I mean, he's one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. However, he is getting a little bit long in the tooth, isn't he? Uh, for sure. Um, he is. I'm going to look it up at cap friendly, but this is a lot of for only five years is maybe not too bad. The guy is a beast. He just never stops. Uh, Ovechkin, I think, could play till he's 40 years old. I swear to God, he's he, he's built like a freaking mule and uh, he is now 35 years old. So it's till he's 39. 30, this is till he's 40. 40 years old. And you know what? I actually think that he'll do it. That he'll be effective all the way up until he's 40 years old. I have never seen a guy with the physical stature of Ovechkin and the passion that he plays with. Uh, to me, I think I just I think he'll do it. 35 years old. 9.5 million for a 35-year-old is a lot, and I wouldn't recommend it for very many players. But for Ovechkin, probably worth every penny. I <laughs> probably I, I'll ne I will never uh, put Ovechkin on a uh, you know I'll never undervalue Ovechkin. He's just too good. Uh, Pavel Bignevich now after getting traded from the New York Rangers, which I did a video on that and what I thought about it. Uh, for Blay and a second round pick in 2022. They quickly come to a 
deal with a four-year, $23.2 million deal with uh, Buknevich, who will probably play on their top line. That's $5.8 million. He's almost been a point of game player two years in a row. It's kind of hard to argue with this contract. Um, how is he going to be playing for St. Louis? That might be the difficult thing. I don't know what I watch Buknevich all the time. He's one of those guys that he kind of surprises you that he puts like you don't notice him much all game, and then next thing you know, he's got two points. He's a very sneaky player. Um, he won't be playing. He'll be playing, and he didn't really play with the top end players all the time there in, for the Rangers too. But he'll be playing for O'Reilly here. There's been a rumor though that O'Reilly wants out of St. Louis. I haven't heard any confirmation of that or anything of that nature, but St. Louis does look to be getting younger. Bignavich is only 26 years old. They sign him for four years until he's 30. I think this is a great contract for St. Louis. Uh, for Bignavich, it's a good contract. Um, he's obviously, he's gambling on himself a little bit, but by the time he's 30, he's going to be able to get even more than that. And if he keeps on getting almost a point a game, he probably will get more than that. So might be a good gamble for sure. Connor Garland signs with the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, well, let me move that down a little. Can you see that? There we go. Connor Garland signs with the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, this is another one, a five-year deal that carries an average annual value of 4.95. So five, basically a $25 million, five, five million a year deal. He's another guy that had, he's putting up about, in Arizona, he was on pace for two years to be about a 50 to, between 50 and 60 point player, around 23 to 25 goals. Uh, Exciting player, gritty player, fan favorite. Uh, not the biggest guy in the world, but doesn't back down from anybody. Gets in the tight spots. This could end up being an absolute steal of a deal. And you don't say that too often with Brian Benning, let me say. Okay. Uh, this is a guy who signed uh, Roussel and Beagle about years ago for not much less than this for $3.5 million. He's made, he's did some bad contracts. This one could actually end up being really, really good. Connor Garland didn't have much to play with in Arizona. Now he's going to have an opportunity to play with the likes of Peterson or Besser or Horvat. Uh, he could post up 60 to 70 points. I think it's possible with that kind of talent. That $5 million deal looks good right away. And if he keeps that up, it looks extremely good five years from now. So I say that's a good deal for Vancouver. Uh, uh, I'm sure Garland's happy. He was a late bloomer. Uh, didn't that was a, that's the thing about late bloomers? They don't really get much chance to build up their confidence to give them large contracts. So it's not a bad deal for Garland either. Uh, this is the full contract breakdown: three point seven five. Four, six, six, and five. Whatever. It's five point five million per. That's all I care about. Um, I think it's an excellent contract. So Edmonton Oilers to buy out James Neal. This is no surprise. The, I think they were trying to get somebody to to do a retainment thing in Majigger, but uh, there was nobody out there that was even willing to do that, and they would have to give up assets. So the next four years, though, they're putting $2 million on their cap for nada, for nothing. Not the funnest thing in the world to do, uh, all because of a very bad uh, Lucic contract that was given out by Shirelli. And uh, they did this, which was pretty much untradeable, uh, or unbuyoutable, I should say. It's a new word, buyoutable. Um, so they ended up getting James Neal where they could buy out the deal. James Neal is a guy that had all the talent in the world, but he didn't work hard enough to become the type of athlete that could have a long career. Uh, it's, it's been pretty much known everywhere. I've heard it everywhere he's been. The guy likes to play golf, and he doesn't like to work out as much as he should. And he had a great career nonetheless. 
great natural talent, but he faded off fast, and it was pretty much expected. Somebody will probably give him a million or two just to see if they can bring back the magic, but his career is getting close to over, I would think. Uh, another part of this is they did not, the Edmonton Oilers did not uh, buy out Miko Koskinen. I believe they're probably looking at some sort of a retainment there. I hope they're not thinking of having Koskinen as their backup with Smith next year. I really, really hope. But we'll see what happens. San Jose Sharks to buy out uh, Martin Jones. And this one hurts. Retaining um, two, almost $2 million, $2.5 million, almost $3 million in 2023-24, then a million and a half, million and a half, all the way up to 2027 you know you're a bad goaltender when a team is willing to take that much of a cap hit for the next five years to buy you out he like 8.96 he had last year i don't think he's i don't think he's had a a 0.900 or better for quite a while uh he has just been awful and was I would have bought him out too. You really had no choice but to buy him out. So they do get a little bit of extra cap space there in San Jose. We'll see what they do with it. One of the most interesting teams to figure out if they're actually ever going to do a rebuild, if possible, or if they're going to try to get better. With an extra $4 million this year, they might be able to pull out another winger. They are in a weak division. You never know. I think they actually probably could uh make the playoffs next year to tell you the honest truth if they could get actually they need defensemen more than wingers so we'll see what they do with that uh the other question of course is they are going to need another goaltender now san jose is uh they don't have one in the wings ready they did trade for aiden hill but aiden hill is not a guy that you would want to be a number one so i think san jose will use probably a good chunk of that buyout to find themselves a goaltender if Carolina does not sign Bernier, he might be able to save you. He was absolutely lights out for Detroit the last couple of years. And San Jose does have a better team than Detroit did. If they could give him, he could maybe bring you to the at least the playoffs. So I would consider that, Mr. Uh, Wilson. I know you're listening out there. So why wouldn't you be, right? So now you know. Go get Bernie. Off with you. There you go. Okay. Chicago. Now the big one. Big trade. Big trade of Rudy. Chicago Blackhawks to acquire Mark Andre Fleury. This is done. Chicago Blackhawks do acquire Mark Andre Fleury. <sighs> wow. The Chicago Blackhawks go get Jones and Mark Andre Fleury. A few things about this. Obviously, they must think they're going to be able to convince him to come because apparently Marc-Andre Fleury is a little bit pissed. Or at the very least, he does. he's strongly considering retiring instead of going to Chicago for family reasons. He doesn't want to move his family again from Vegas. They've gone through, they, they moved from Pittsburgh to Vegas uh, he's older now. He's getting close to retirement. Uh, does it make much sense to move your family all over to Chicago? Really? Uh, so he might end up having to play in Chicago while his family's in Vegas. He has to hash this all out. But the fact of the matter is, if he does decide to play in Chicago, it looks like they're going for it next year. That's the big story here for me. They they go get Jones, sign him for $9.5 million. They give up Boquist and uh, what was it? Was it a first round pick? Yeah, like a whole crap load of uh, assets that you use when you're rebuilding. Wasn't it just last year they said they were rebuilding and now they're just going out and grabbing Mark andre Fleury and Jones? Uh, I'm not sure how much cap space they have here, but I don't think it's like crazy amounts. They might have enough room for one more player. I don't see how they're contenders here. Taze is back. Yeah. Uh, Their defense with Jones. Jones is going to save their defense there. 
They still don't have the most solid defense that I've ever seen. However, the Bowmans are geniuses. Okay, I, I last year when they trade let uh, Crawford go, I was like, well, they have no goaltending; they're going to be absolutely poop. And they almost made the playoffs because the Lankinen was there that nobody saw happening. What happens with Lankinen now? So I guess I mean. That kind of goaltending can bring most teams to the playoffs, but is that all you want? Do you really think you're a cup contender here? Very odd stuff indeed. I imagine Chicago somehow is not done, and they'll be grabbing more, uh, grabbing some more at players, I would think, to fill out that roster because I think they're a little too green, and their veterans are a little too old to really have make a play for uh, a Stanley Cup this year. Uh, Vancouver Canucks expected to buy out Braden Holtby. Uh, this was no surprise. And when they signed this deal with Holtby, I was one of the, I was one of the people, I don't know if there were other people that was really iffy about it because what I saw in Washington, I saw Holtby that was really kind of a pain in the ass on the ice. He would call out his teammates he acted kind of like what appeared to me like an arrogant jerk. And I saw it in Vancouver too. And I don't know how they didn't see that. Not kind of, wouldn't be the goaltender I would most be looking forward to bring up a guy like Thatcher Demko, although it didn't look like it hurt him at all. Um, anyways, they buy him out now. And I think those might be part of the reasons why. Also the fact that he didn't play well in goal either. So um, at the end of his tenure in Washington, he wasn't playing much better in goal. Now he's going to be <clears throat> losing a little bit off his contract. I think if he gets a 1.9 year contract, he doesn't lose any money. 1.9 mil a year. I think he'll get a one a one year contract, and he'll want 1.9 mil a year. I don't know which team is going to do something like that. Maybe the aforementioned San Jose Sharks. I hope not San Jose. Because you're just going from one fire to another, I think. Okay. Uh, Minnesota. Okay, that, didn't want that. There was one more I wanted to look at here. Brandon Dillon dealt to the Winnipeg Jets for two second rounders in 2022 and 2023. I'm going to tell you right now, Washington did a heck of a job getting that kind of a return for Brandon Dillon. Brandon Dillon is a borderline top four defenseman which we're going to find out in Winnipeg. Um, he, he brings grit. He brings pain. He's good for the playoffs. He's not the fastest mover at all. He can be pylonish at times. But if he does get a hold of you, you're going to get hurt. And he can hit well. Um, he's, he's not bad. If he catches you in the corner, you're probably not getting out of it. That's what's good about Brendan Dillon. He is, a, uh, he is an average shutdown defenseman. And they gave up, doesn't sound like much, two second-round picks. But those second-round picks in 22 and 23 are going to be, especially the 23 pick, are going to be very, very valuable. As we get closer to the 20, 2023 draft, there'll be less and less people giving up those second-round picks. That was, a second-round pick in 2023 is might even be better than a first-round pick in the like 15 or later in this year's draft. In fact, I will say it will be better. So it'd be like getting a first round pick in this draft. 2022, not as good as 223, but not bad. I think they gave up a lot. However, I'm going to give Winnipeg a little bit of uh, slack here because it's hard to get players to go to Winnipeg. And if, if they find a player that says, yes, I want to, I'll go to Winnipeg. I want to be there. I'll sign you up there because he's only got one year left at $4 million. There's no way Winnipeg does this if they don't have a contract in their back pocket. If they did do this and they don't have a back contract in their back pocket because Dylan will be a free agent, this is a horrible deal. Horrible deal. If they do have one in their back contract, I get it. Unfortunately, teams like Edmonton, uh, Winnipeg, and there's some few other teams in the league, they got to pay a little more because of where they are located on the planet. And uh, I think that's whatever what happened here. Anyways, that's my full 42, boys and girls. 
Uh, thanks, thanks for subscribing and hitting the bell. Uh, if you want to continue to the frolic, we're about to do a little Perlo dance here, and I'm going to tell you a few things. If not, off with you. Thanks for the sub and hitting the like button. That helps out the channel a lot. Okay, for the rest of you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to go. Okay, for the rest of you. Perlo dance. David Bowie, by the way, one of the finest, greatest musicians, songwriters of all time. I say, um, oh, you're a little more Perlo dance. Sorry about that. Hockey News reports there. He's part of, he comes on my show all the time. There we go. Is that enough Perlo dance for you? CL and all the gang, Ted. Okay, good. So what we're doing here is we are going to grow this channel and we are going I'm going to come out to all the lands as part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. I want to go I'm this is my vision and future. It's my bucket list. It's a it's the list. It's the only thing on the bucket list. I'm going to come out to wherever you guys are. We're going to go to, I'm going to go to every arena in the NHL, and I'm going to take all whoever wants to come. Whenever I show up, you want to come, you come. And we're going to go to games together. We're going to get ourselves a Jet O Frolic, too, and you can come to all of them. That's that's going to happen. Um, starts with subs, telling people about this fine programming, the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and the NHL Pearls of Wisdom show. Also throw in there off the wall, John. He's fantastic. If you don't watch. If you don't, if you're not sub to him, uh, JJ Boric, uh, Peyton on the radio, Lance from Hockey Writers Inc. Check him out. All of those guys, be part of this. Come and be part of this community, and we're going to do amazing things. Amazing, it's going to be awesome. So, get as many people as you can to sub up there. Let's perlo dance ourselves out of here. Frolic in the land. Okay, bye.